Greetings everyone, my name is Minister Justin Diller, and it is a joy and a delight to be before you one more time. We thank the Lord that we are amongst the living, and right now I would like to pray and lift up those that are under the sound of my voice. In the Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for those under the sound of my voice. Lord, we thank you for them and for them tuning in one more time. Lord, we thank you that they are giving their undivided attention unto what thus says the Lord. Lord, right now, I pray and ask that you please touch their families. Please touch their jobs, their establishments. Please touch their vehicles. Lord, also, please bless their going in and their coming out. And Lord, we thank you that in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Right now, Lord, I pray and ask that you please touch me as I deliver your word. I ask that you please increase and I want to decrease. I want all of you and none of me. Lord, we forever give you the glory. We thank you for forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins of omission, commission, and disposition. Lord, we don't want to admit you out of this service. But Lord, we want to lift you up. And right now, Lord, I pray that you please open up hearts and minds so that all of us will be able to receive from you. Lord, in order to receive from you, we must come with our, our hands lifted up, and we must surrender our everything unto you, so that we may receive full benefits. Lord, we thank you that the blessings of the Lord make us one rich and adds no sorrow unto them. And also, we thank you that Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise and bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Lord, we thank you for all of your benefits that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you for your peace, your joy, your happiness. Lord, we also thank you for endurance. Lord, we thank you for strength. Lord, we thank you for which you have given us today, Lord, and we thank you for giving us our daily bread, Give, giving us exactly what we need today. Not somebody else's daily bread, but you have personalized it and given us our daily bread on what we need today. Lord, I ask that you please bless this message that it will move smoothly as well as the technology. And Lord, we forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for all that you have done for us and what you are doing. In the midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, on today, my brothers and sisters, I would like to invite you to meet me in Genesis. Meet me in Genesis, the 32nd chapter, starting with the 24th verse. 24th verse, all the way down to the 32nd verse. The 24th verse all the way down to the 32nd verse. And when you have arrived, it reads, and I will be reading from the King James Bible version. You can follow along in whichever version that you have. I will be reading from the King James Bible version. And it reads, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man, with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. And he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said, verse 28, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with man, and hath prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. 
And he said, Wherefore it is that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, and it's a new that strength. Now I would like to speak with you for these brief moments. Jesus is, Jesus touched my life, and I am forever changed. Jesus touched my life. And I am forever changed. Jesus touched my life, and I am forever changed. There are some other thoughts that came to my mind when I read this text, and those are Oops, I messed up. Oops, I messed up. Here's another one. Face to face with my destiny. I'm having a face off with my destiny. Here's one more. While on the run from my past, I ran into my destiny. While on the run from my past, I ran into my destiny or I met my destiny. Okay, and lastly, Jacob the Olympian. Jacob the Olympian. Now, to my left, your right, I see a picture right here that I have up here. This is a picture of some Olympians. Let's start with the top. The top is Laura Williams, and she was on the United States track and field team. And she specialized in the 100 meters, the 4x1. And also, she had the opportunity to medal in the United States bobsled team, women's bobsled team. And so we have one Olympian. And down below is Marian Jones. Now I had the opportunity to meet Marian Jones when I was in high school. And this is uh, 20 something years ago. And so I have a picture with Marianne Jones, and, and Marianne Jones was um, involved in, um, in a couple of sports basketball and track and field. And she also competed in the Olympics for the 4x4, four four, the 4x1. Four and also she ran in the 100 meters, but she also played basketball, and so I had an opportunity to go to a clinic in Winter Park, and I was able to take a picture with Marion Jones when I was in high school. So we have Jacob, the Olympian. Jacob, the Olympian. Here's another great message that I enjoyed enduring. I pray that you will be blessed by it. I believe that you will be able to relate or understand my story and Jacob's journey. to do is I would like to go over the Dr. David Jeremiah study notes and then I will go back through the scripture and tell you what the Lord is telling me about this particular text. And here's the notes from Dr. David Jeremiah. It says, man is capitalized in verses 
24 through 29. It says, Man is capitalized because this is a theophany. Say the word theophany. And it says, Theophany from the Merriam Webster Dictionary, a visual manifestation of a deity. A visual manifestation of a deity. And then going back, it says, Man is capitalized because this is a theophany and Old Testament appearance of Christ. Jacob did not initiate the contest. God wanted to separate the self will Jacob from all supports until he was alone before him. Hosea 12, verses 3 and 4. Something the Lord still does with some of his followers. Genesis 32, verses 25. The Hebrew word for touch may indicate any type of touch. From a gentle caress to a afflicting strike, Apparently, Jacob experienced the latter. Jacob proved strong. The man did not prevail against him as the pair wrestled through the night. Yet, one outcome was lifelong weakness in Jacob's hip. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. The man was apparently the Lord himself. 2 Corinthians 12, 7-9 states, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I might depart from me, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Continuing on with the Dr. David Jeremiah study notes. No longer can Jacob be can no longer be called Jacob is evidence of the remarkable transformation. Jacob's birth name described him grasping the heel of his brother Esau. Genesis 25, 24 through 26. The night-long wrestle match, however, made him Israel, a positive name meaning God prevails. Numbers 24, 5. Numbers 24, verse 5. Going forward, scriptures use names interchangeably. Jacob named the place Peniel, meaning the face of God. Genesis 32, verses 31. After the encounter, Jacob limped on his hip, each step reminding him that he no longer operated in his own strength, but in God's. Jacob was changed for the betterment, the better, from the cunning to clinging, from resisting to resting, from the crafty one to the conquered one. The titles again, Jesus is touched, Jesus touched my life, and I am forever changed. Jesus touched my life, and I am forever changed. Are you familiar with this song? Shackled by heavy burden. Shackled by a heavy burden. Neath a load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and I know. He touched me, and he made me whole. Face to face with my destiny. While I was on the run, 
from my past, I ran into my destiny or I met my destiny. Jacob the Olympian. Now here are some notes that the Lord has given me. The positive side of me has to come out of this crisis. The positive side of me has to come out of this crisis. And we thank the Lord, we thank God for redeeming man back to himself through salvation. The salvation process of sending Jesus and Jesus coming to live, to die, and for God to raise him up from the dead. And we thank the Lord for Jesus. We thank God for Jesus coming and being willing to come to regenerate and to reconciliate man back to God because of sin. If you read Romans chapter 5, it speaks about how sin was not too much or just a stain that Jesus could not clean up. And that's why we are thankful unto God for today. I have some questions up here. Have you ever said, let me go? Okay, that's one question. Or have you ever been stuck and could not leave? It says in verse 27, And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. What name are we going by? It is not what we are called, is what we go by. It is not what we are called, is what we go by. And Jacob was known as being a trickster. Many of us can attest to events in our lives in which some wonder how we made it over. Their soul looks back and wonder how they made it over. If we would be true and honest, there was something that we wrestled with. We wrestled with it all day and all night. And when we thought that we were getting the upper hand, whatever it was leveled up with us and we wanted to tap out. We thank God right now that it was Him that help us to make it through those times. During those times, we tried to call a lifeline and phone a friend, and no one answered. We tried to go to the bank and ask for a loan, and our credit score was not high enough. We probably went to the store, and maybe we were looking for toilet tissue. And at the brink of it all, God delivered us from our dilemma. I thought I might uh, add that in there. Because that's what some are going through right now. Jacob encountered a life-changing event. As you know in the story, Esau came in from... The field and Jacob brought Esau and he said Esau said I'm hungry and I am about to die from exhaust Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for bread and red lentil stew also the father of Jacob and Esau Isaac instructed Esau to run an errand for him and when he completed this errand, Isaac was going to bless Esau. Rebekah, the mother, overheard the conversation and conjured up a plan with Jacob to outwit the dim sight and senses of her husband Isaac so that Jacob would receive his father's blessing before his death. As a result, when Esau found out about Jacob, being the blessed one, 
he came for Jacob. Jacob kept running and did not look back on the run from his brother because he and his mother tricked Isaac to bless Jacob instead of Esau. Sometimes we are in on getting over on others and forget what we sow we will reap. How did it feel when we were discovered? Was it a good feeling or a bad feeling? How did we feel when our cover was blown? Many of us can attest that we felt uneasy, embarrassed, afraid, and even more when we were discovered. Some of us, if we were real with an extra L at the end of real, were messing with more than fire. We were messing with sister or brother dynamite and found out that he or she was the bomb and it almost left a sour taste in our mouth. We thought we had one more time to trick another person. We thought we had one more trick up our sleeves. My brother and sisters, I have something to tell someone here today. That God can turn your life around and all it takes is one encounter with God. Sometimes that's what people do. They were on the run like Jacob from Esau. They decided to move from place to place, trying to change their identity, and they brought their bag of tricks along with them. Tell the devil today, silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. Some adults are playing games as well. Calling them out won't change what they are doing. The Bible states, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. That's Proverbs 26, verse 4. Jacob was running scared. Jacob was on the run. When suddenly, I said suddenly, he found himself alone and he finally met his match. Can you recall when you finally met your match? Can you recall when you finally bit off more than you can chew? Well, that is what happened in the story. Jacob found himself squaring up in a match that was the fight of his life, that lasted all day and all night. There's a song by Alvin Darling, All Night. All night, I wouldn't let go. All night, I just held on. I called on the Lord all night long and I wouldn't let go until he blessed my soul. I'm a witness, great God Almighty, that he came through. Jacob wrestled with an angel all night long and he wouldn't let go. Go until the break of dawn. He said, you got to bless me before you leave. I felt the same way when I was on my knees. I asked the Lord to help me to be strong. I called on him all night long. I called on the Lord. I called on the Lord. I called on the Lord. I called on the Lord all night long and I wouldn't let go. And I wouldn't let go. And I wouldn't let go. I called on the Lord all night long and I wouldn't let go until he blessed me. Until he blessed my soul, I'm a witness. Thank God Almighty that he came through. The titles again, Jesus touched my life and I am forever changed. Oops, I messed up. Face to face with my destiny. While on the run from my past, I ran into my destiny. Or I met my destiny. Jacob the Olympian. And I thank the Lord for you tuning in today. But right now I would like to play this song as I open up the doors of the church. If you were able to understand this message. 
or if this message spoke to you. I pray that you will understand that the Lord cares for you. He has given you another chance, another opportunity to break, to stand, to walk, to move, and to live. This is falling in love with Jesus by fruit music. by Kirk Whalen. Do you know that Jesus loves you on today? Well, I'm here to let you know that He cares about you. What you're going through, He cares all about you. What you're going through is not being, is, is, is not going unnoticed. Think about it. God cared so much to send an angel to wrestle with Jacob in the midst of his trickery. And yes, we know down the road when Jacob met Laban and then he had to work seven years for Leah and then seven more years to get Rachel to marry Rachel. And what we sow, we will reap. We are not smarter than God. We are not invisible that we will not meet our match. Right now, I would like to let you know that you can put your trust in Jesus. That you can put your trust in the Lord. That you can believe in Him and know that you are saved. That you can give Him your burdens. Give Him, give him your worries. Give Him your doubts. And know that he is the one that is keeping you and keeping us right now. We can't put our trust in the government. We can't put our trust in man or in woman. But we can put our trust in Jesus. Think about it. The Word of God, the Bible. This right here. Think about it. This has stood the test of time longer than us. So it is a trustworthy source. And so I'm here to just let you know that if you forgive, if you ask the Lord for forgiveness, He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And also, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, yes, you are saved, my brothers and sisters. And here's your chance to get yourself involved in the church. Here's your chance to remember what the Lord has done for you. Here's your chance to give to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord and know that He will keep you no matter what may come your, come your way. He, he will keep you and never leave you, never leave you astray. And as we close out, I would like to Deal with benediction. Here's one that I don't normally do.
And it says, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages and forevermore. And all believers say amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters.